What's up everybody, Dr. Ali Hader, interventional cardiologist. Thank you for stopping by to the channel. You know, I didn't even think I'd have to be doing a video about this, but despite what a lot of us are doing on social media to try and dispel some of these myths that are out there, we're still seeing the same questions asked over and over again and all sorts of misinformation out there. So we're gonna do a little COVID-19 vaccine, true or false? All right, question one. The COVID-19 vaccine is not that efficacious. That is completely false. In fact, the first two vaccines to obtain EUA approval in the United States was the Moderna vaccine and the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine, okay? And these vaccines had 94% and 95% efficacy. Take a look at this data. You don't have to be the statistician to look at this graph to figure out that the vaccine was way more efficacious than placebo. Now, yes, 95% is not 100%, but to put this 95% efficacy into perspective, this is one of the most effective vaccines that we've had. This is on par with like chicken pox and measles. Out of the 32,000 patients that were actually vaccinated between the Pfizer and the Moderna vaccine trials, there was only one patient in the Pfizer trial that had severe COVID. There was zero in the Moderna trial. And that one patient in the Pfizer trial was not even hospitalized. They were deemed severe because their oxygen saturation developed dropped below a certain percentage. If you want to learn a little bit more about the mRNA vaccines and their mechanism, check out my last video here. I'll link it above. All right, next question. True or false? I don't need the vaccine because I'm healthy and COVID-19 has a 99% survival rate. Again, that is false. Firstly, everybody seems to focus on this 99% survival rate. Now, whatever the actual number is, it doesn't matter because it's not just about the people who die. Not to mention that over 400,000 people have already died and there's many more to come, but the people who survive, a lot of these patients are not completely normal. If you're really sick and you're in the ICU, coming out of that alone is gonna deem you sort of a lower functional status than you once before. Not to mention that COVID seems to have these other sort of lingering symptoms that have been occurring in a lot of folks. And those can be very severe symptoms or they can be even just mild symptoms but affect your quality of life, even in young folks. I can't tell you the number of young folks I've had who've come in with these weird symptoms of palpitations, fatigue, brain fog. In fact, I did a video about the COVID long hauler lingering symptoms, I'll click that above as well. And the other part of it, even if you don't get very sick or die with COVID, you could actually spread it to somebody else who may. Again, that's how a pandemic works. It spreads from person to person. Not everybody's gonna die or get very sick, but each of us are part of the puzzle. And if we don't all play a role in this, then we're never gonna get out of it. We also just don't know which people are gonna get that sick. Again, we know that the older you are, the sicker you are at baseline, the more likelihood you're gonna get severely ill, but there are still some young folks out there getting sick. We all, us physicians who take care of COVID patients have anecdotal experiences with very young folks in their 30s, 40s, 50s who are ending up either dead or severely critically ill. Sort of like a game of Russian roulette. We just don't know who's gonna get really ill with COVID. And look, if you're young, and you're healthy, that means you want this pandemic to end, don't you? Because I, for one, want to be able to go to a restaurant where I'm sitting elbow to elbow, somewhere in the East Village at my favorite sushi joint. I want to be able to, to be able to go into a bar and fight through people to get to order my drink just because I want to. And I don't know, maybe I want to go to a music show on a concert. These are the things that are normal in society. So if you do want to do those kinds of things, then you better get vaccinated. Okay, next question. True or false? Getting the COVID vaccine puts you at risk for possible infertility. Now, this again is completely false. This was all based on this idea that was proposed on a thread in Reddit uh, that the antibodies that are created by the mRNA vaccine, which are basically antibodies to the spike protein, could in fact cross-react and affect placenta. Placenta is obviously something that's critical in pregnancy. Now, a couple of problems with that. Number one, the placenta is created well after you have already pregnant, so it wouldn't cause infertility. If this was actually true, it could potentially cause miscarriages, okay? Number two, they're talking about a completely different protein. Even if there's similarities, antibodies will only interact with something that's identical to the sequence it's supposed to interact with, okay? And thirdly, this antibody response that they're proposing would also occur in the setting of COVID infection because the spike protein antibodies created when you have COVID are the same as the mRNA vaccines create. That means that we should be seeing all these miscarriages occurring in patients who've had COVID 
we're not hearing anything about that. So again, this was a sort of a baseless theory without much science behind it, of course, because this has all been all over the media, we're gonna be watching this just like we are every other adverse event, but we have not seen any signal. If you wanna dive a little deeper into the whole pregnancy and infertility issues with COVID-19 vaccine, check out this video by Dr. Mike and Mama Dr. Jones, really great, I'll link it above. All right, next question. The COVID-19 vaccine will not reduce the transmission of COVID to other people. Now, technically this is again false. And that's because we don't know the answer to that. And that's because we just don't have the data. Now, if this vaccine does what it's supposed to do, and for, by all accounts, what we're seeing, there is no question that it should absolutely reduce transmission. However, we just don't have that data yet because it takes time to gather that. So I, for one, will be surprised if we find that this vaccine, in fact, does not reduce transmission as well. But again, we don't have the robust evidence to make that claim. So we won't, we gotta maintain some scientific humility unlike a lot of things that we've seen during this pandemic. Okay, true or false, the vaccine will not protect us against these new strains that we're hearing about out of South Africa and other areas. Now again, that particular statement is false. And again, it's because we just don't know yet. Now, so far, some of the preliminary data has shown that this vaccine should likely protect us against those new strains. There is certainly a possibility that a strain will develop at some point that could evade the vaccine. So we have to be really cautious, we have to watch that. But remember, antibodies can be created to multiple different epitopes on a protein. So just because there's a new strain does not mean it's altered the protein that the antibodies um, are supposed to react to. Nonetheless, if a new strain were to develop that could evade the vaccines, then the beauty of the mRNA technology is that we could just print out a brand new vaccine to account for that. Now, the more important thing to remember is the best way to avoid new strains to even develop from the first point is to vaccinate as many people as possible because vaccines replicate and they mutate, that's what they do. So the less opportunity we give them to replicate and mutate, the better the chances are we won't see these new strains. And the answer to that is herd immunity and that's gonna only be facilitated through vaccination. All right, so that's it for now. I'm sure we can talk about hundreds of questions. If you wanna learn more about COVID-19 and vaccines, check out my Instagram page. I did a couple of good IG lives in there that are in the IGTV section, check that out. If you're on Clubhouse, look for me there. We're also having a lot of sessions out there to talk about um, the vaccines and fighting the misinformation. So um, definitely subscribe and hit the bell notifications if you like this video and hopefully see you guys soon.